What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Just Cause TV channel. NFC video coming at you here for over-under wins and loss predictions. Guys, in these videos and throughout the football year, I will be joined by Cousin Steve. How's it going, man? Going great, man. Just chilling out here on vacation, you know, trying to kick your guys' butt. Let's do it. Yeah, there's somebody that has something to say about that. And it's the guy who won our pickums last year. You know him as Dr. West. How's it going, man? Defending champion, we're going for it. Oh my god! Okay, this, we're not going to cut to Doctor West anymore. That's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did win the Pickums last year, Steve. You did win the AFC last year, so it's only fitting for yours truly to have a little piece of the pie here as your winner from the NFC last year with a measly nine, if you will, if you want to call that <laughs> winning for over under picks, I suppose. Saved by the NFC South, which yours truly absolutely nailed last year, including the division winner and. The overall Super Bowl pick out of the NFC, Tampa Bay, and then making it there to the NFC. Uh, for those keeping track at home, I did pick the Super Bowl 100% correct last year. We're going to try to do that again this year. Today with our NFC picks, are you guys ready to go? I can't believe that, Anthony, you chose New Orleans to win the NFC South, but Tampa to win this to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, go back and watch That's so it, man. frustrating. I'll put so the, frustrating. I'll put the clip in here. I out of the AFC, it's got to be Kansas City for me. Out of the NFC, I actually have New Orleans winning the division, but then I have Tampa Bay beating them in the NFC Championship. I think, me personally, it is very hard to bet against Tom Brady when it comes to the playoffs. Uh, the Super Bowl this year is in Tampa, and there's never been a host also being in the Super Bowl, so I think we're going to see a Tampa Bay Kansas City Super Bowl this year. That's perfect. God bless you. Yeah. Well, let's do it here, guys. Let's kick things off with the division that gave us the most trouble on the face of the earth last year. This blasted NFC East, guys. My goodness, look at this. Everybody super close yet again this year. Vegas favoring Dallas. And as a reminder, guys, all of our odds of win predictions here come from DK Sportsbook. They're fantastic, guys. You really should go use them. Dallas, win projection of nine with a division odds winner of plus 150 in this close of a division here. Dr. West, we'll get things off here with you this time. Dallas over under nine wins. I think this is the perfect line. I would love to take the push, but I'm not a sissy. So I'm going to go the under on this one. Ooh. They are going to be a fun team to watch. Their offense is fun. If Dak can stay healthy, uh, Zeke and Amari Cooper and CD Lamb, like they, it's going to be a great a great offense. Their defense is meh. And uh, I like other teams in this divisions, as you will hear me say later. So I'm going to go with the under. Taking the under. Cousin Steve, we got demolished by this division last year. Dallas, what are your thoughts? You know, <laughs> tend to go under on everybody just because eventually <laughs> you're going to get one right, right? Uh, so... Um, but someone's got to come out ahead and the most likely team seemingly to do that would be the Cowboys. Um, uh, someone's got to at least be a game, you know, more than two games above 500. Right. So, uh, I, I think the win projection on the Cowboys isn't over. Uh, I think it's a, uh, I, I, I think it's a close over. I think they're about 10 maybe 11. Um, I, I think Mike McCarthy figures it out this year. Obviously he's a good coach, won a lot of games in, uh, green Bay, but obviously Dak Prescott is not Aaron Rodgers. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not super confident in this, but we'll see how it goes. Guys, this division comes back to the quarterbacks for me. We've got Dak Prescott there in Dallas, of course, Fitz magic in Washington, Daniel Jones for the Giants and Jalen Hurts for the Eagles. What? Um, Dak is the cream of the crop for me. I kept him in like three leagues this year in fantasy because I got him late in the drafts last year. It's over for me, but it's again ten and seven this year. This this is a, it's just a division that's ripe for the taking. Who's going to come out here and take it, Doctor West? And you think it's not going to be Dallas? It seems like. Correct. Okay. That's, you know, enough for Dallas here. We're going to go to one of our favorite teams here on the channel, the Washington Buckeyes. Guys, this was one of our teams last year. We we were all over the place with them. Uh, Dr. West is a Buckeyes fan. They were lacking a team name. They had a lot of Buckeyes with Dwayne Haskins and Terry McLaurin, of course, last year. 
So the Washington Buckeyes, as they are affectionately called here on the channel, with a win projection of eight and a half. Dr. West, we'll go back to you again for this one to lead off here. Eight and a half wins. Who's my favorite player in the NFL? Oh, hold that back a little bit. Get that all in there. Oh, oh yeah. Go to your uh, left. You, Go to your left. Yeah, uh, uh, there it oh, is. We're getting a reflection. We're yep. getting a reflection yep. here. You know, there's a rainbow here. There's a gold card right oh, here. You yeah. can't see it very well. Anyways, <laughs> you know, you forgot the best Buckeye, which is Chase Young, who's going to be the defensive player of the year. And uh, these 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 Washingtons, Washingtons, they're gonna they're gonna kill it. I think they're a ten or eleven win team. Uh, Fist Magic is better than Dwayne Haskins. I hate to admit it, but they they have addressed all of their weaknesses. They are going to beat people down. They're going to lead the league in sacks between Montez Sweat and Chase Young. They're going to be just terrorizing the op- opposing team, and uh, they're going to win a lot of games, in my humble opinion. Man, Alex Smith no longer there as well. Dr. West paving the way for uh, Fitzmagic himself. Cousin Steve, are you going to agree here with Cousin West? Or with uh, Cousin West? Ah. Uh, yes, Cousin West. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it hurts my soul, but uh, yeah, I have to agree with West. Now, I don't think they're going to be crushing people like he says. Um, I think this is a nine-win team. <laughs> that gold chase uh, young, though. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all know we all know West loves. So, say it to Chase uh, Young, Steve. Talk to right. his face. Yeah. I'm I will. If he stepped in this room right now, I'm like, you're great, but your team is not. So <laughs> good for you. So I think it's a nine win team. I think it's an over technically, but uh, you know, I, with all the odds, I think two plus 200 for them to win the division. Not a bad bet. I would probably take that. Man, guys, I am a, I am just, I'm, I'm cheaping out here, but not in a cheap way. I'm taking the over as well because I do think this team is good. Fitz Magic, does he have any of that magic left in the tank? He's on his, what, upteenth team in ages, it seems like, for this season. is what, 17th year in the NFL. Defense is hungry. McScorin is fantastic. That's his new name, Dr. West, is McScorin, by the way, if you didn't know that. Nice. Um, Curtis Samuel is good for some gadget plays here. He's got his little out valve and Adam Humphreys again there in the slot. I like that for Washington. Offense looks good. Uh, Ron Rivera, hungry coach, man. A um, lot of fun here at the top i feel like i have both dallas and washington winning 10 games this year so we'll see who i I don't know who i'm gonna pick to win this division yet i'll see who you guys go but if i've got them two winning 10 games we're going to the giants here who have a win projection of seven games they won six last year somehow i don't know how honestly they went six and ten last year despite being very unremarkable no saquon saquon is back uh push I'm going to go ahead and throw my push out there. I'm pushing on the Giants. Uh, this is an absolutely dead, perfect number. 7-10. and 10. They will go 7-10 and 10 this year. You heard it here first. Pushing the Giants. Cousin Steve, Giants, where are you going? This is a confusing team, man. Like, it's hard to – It's. Re- I think a push is, I think, a great pick. Um, but I, I got to go the under. Got to go the under just because I don't have high confidence in anything really that they're doing. I don't think Daniel Jones is it. I think this is his last year to get to prove what he's doing and what's going on. Um, I love Saquon. Saquon is one of my favorite players in the NFL. Seems like a really great guy, really great football player. Um, But he's been injury prone, and that's the best thing they got. And if he's not there, um, I don't know if he's good for two more games if, you know, he's not quite there. So I think this is the under. Taking the under. Dr. West, you going to break this and go with the over? No, all three? No, this is the Dr. West lock of the week, and it's an under. Uh, obvious under. I think they're uh, a three-win team. They are just straight doo-doo. Uh, Joe Judge is not good. I think Freddie Kitchens, his, maybe the worst coach of all time in the NFL, is on their staff. Uh, their defense is going to be historically bad. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to be horrendous. Taking the under then. We are not high on the Giants. But guys, we got one more team here. The Eagles. Everybody here was high on them last year. They, for lack of a better terminology here, they shit the bed last year. Let me say that right into the mic. With four wins last year, Vegas, again, this division is going to be tough. Vegas has six and a half. Cousin Steve, where are you going? Man, I don't 
they they had to get rid of Carson Wentz. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is good for a couple wins. I think he'll be a serviceable quarterback. Um, but he has zero support other than Zach Ertz, who is kind of getting up there at this point. Who who does he have? I mean, Miles Sanders is good. Um, I have him on my fantasy team, so I think he's good for some points and some yards and stuff. But I, you know, is he really that big of a threat? You're gonna, you know, he's gonna take away someone else to get open, especially these like not great receivers. Like I can't even name a receiver on their team. And that's not even a joke. So it, I don't think they're gonna be good. I don't think he's worth, you know, three more wins. Jalen Hurts. I think this is an under. Under. Steve, I'll go ahead and fill you in here. They do have Devontae Smith, the Heisman winner of last year. Uh, Jalen Rager. Again, the wide receivers are fine. They're very sub. Average, I would say, subpar wide receiver core. A lot's going to rely on Jalen Hurts here. I'm under as well, but this division's got me. I think there's a lot of one and one games here. I think like each team goes one and one against themselves. I think they get to six, which is under the six and a half. Doctor Wes, you there with us? Absolutely not. I think this is an easy over. I love the five to one odds on the division. Because there's a lot of parity in this division. It, I saw a stat that, you know, the, the stats that Jalen Hurts put up last year were very similar to the stats that Jamar or uh, Lamar Jackson put up before his MVP campaign. I I think that they are rounding into form and they're at least a nine win team. So this is an easy over for me. This is the Dr. West lock one B of the week. Okay, you're throwing a lot of locks here in the NFC East, Doctor. Are you sure you want to do that? As you just said, they have a lot of parity in this division. Hey, listen, listen. Sometimes you gotta you gotta play with big balls. Oh, is that you should get a shirt that says that we're playing with big balls. It's got footballs on it for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Steve shaking his head. All right, well, Doctor Wes, it seems like you're down to two here for your division winner, the Buckeyes and the Eagles. Yep. Where are we going? Is it that Gold Chase Young? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the Washington Buckeyes. Chase Young is going to be chasing people around. That's why his name is Chase. He's chasing. He's going to be chasing quarterbacks. Cousin Steve, looks like you got two overs on here. Where are you going? Yeah, this is it's a tough one. I think it's a. It, I think the the toss up is between the football team <laughs> and the Cowboys. Um, but for me, like you said, I think it comes down to quarterbacks. I think Dak Prescott is. The guy there, and as long as he can stay healthy, um, and again, they don't have Andy Dalton backing him up now this time. Uh, If he can stay healthy, I think the Cowboys take it. That is my tiebreaker here as well. Very high on the Cowboys and our Washington affectionately called Buckeyes. Dak is the cream of the crop and the quarterbacks in this division. Chase Young, you're not going to be able to catch Dak if he's running faster than you, my friend. I'm sorry. Uh, Both teams make the playoffs here, though, for me. Uh, But it's the Cowboys. Dr. West, do you think the Cowboys make the playoffs? NFC is real bad, so they're very alive to make the playoffs. And I I wouldn't bet against them. I'm not going to say they're going to make it, but I wouldn't bet against them. Okay. Steve, we're taking that. Do you think anybody else from this division makes the playoffs then, Cousin Steve? Uh, I think the, the football team could very well get in on a wild card spot, absolutely. Perfect. Let's move forward there, guys. Cowboys and the Buckeyes moving towards the NFC North now, where we've got the Green Bay Packers leading us off here with 13 wins last year. 10 wins are projected for them this year with the division odds of minus 160 to win the division here. Dr. Wes, will the Packers repeat again? And what do you think about this over-under of 10 wins for them? I think the over-under is at least smarter than what it was last year. I remember last year it was something like eight. And I, 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 I like, half. it was, yes. I like galaxy brain myself into this thing. Like maybe, maybe Vegas knows something more than I do because that is sneaky low. And they're a very public team. People love to bet the over with them. I was very much trapped in this thing. Like, man, I don't know. They, they must know something. I don't know. That being said, Aaron Rodgers is back. The whole squad is back. They're going over. They got 13 last year. They get an extra game this year. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't go over. Taking the over. Cousin Steve, you agree here with Dr. Wes? Yeah, absolutely. I think Devontae Adams could be the best wide receiver in football right now. Never bet against Aaron Rodgers. I think it's more. Perfect. Yeah. So, guys, stat of the week here for you. 
Green Bay has won 13 games each of the last two years. And this team has arguably not really changed. It honestly may have gotten better, I would dare say. Aaron Rodgers, just seems, he's like a fine wine. He seems like he's getting better and better. He still has this chip on his shoulder here in Green Bay, it seems like. 10 almost seems a little laughable. I think this line should have been 11 because I think they get to 12 fairly easily here, honestly. 12 and 5 for the Packers. I can't see them going like 10 and 7. That doesn't sound right for the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. He won't let that happen. Neither will Devontae Adams. Very, very easy over here for me. Moving down the list here. Cousin Steve, we were very high on the Vikings last year. They let us down in a major way. We picked them every single week. Basically, we single-handedly gave Dr. West the win last year with how many times we took the Vikings against them. Didn't work out for us. They won seven games last year. It's eight and a half this year. Very teasing. Vegas doesn't know what to do. What are we doing here? Uh, yeah, you know, Vegas doesn't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this team because Kirk Cousins, he's a pretty solid quarterback. He's going to keep it around 500. Um, but I just, I don't think the head coach has it. I just don't think he's got it in him. I watched that game when they, you know, almost got me the win there with the Vikings or the Seahawks last year. Yep. Um, Monday they, night, right? I believe, or Sunday night or something like that. Yeah. They should have won that game. It was, yep. it was what coaching is what lost them that it game. It was, um, they very easily could have went for a field goal, been up like what, like five points, six points, whatever it is, kicked it off and tried to let their defense win. But no, they tried to try to to run it out, didn't get any points, and then the Seahawks came down and scored, and they lost. And it was just it, it's just crappy coaching. So I don't think the head coach has it there. Uh, I think it's an under. Taking the under, very low on the Vikings this year. It looks like Dr. Wes. Yeah, I think this number is perfect. I think they're either an eight win team or a nine win team. So I would never bet it. Uh, I'm going to take the under for the purposes of the show. I think, uh, I don't know, Dallin Cook, he's like bound to be injured. Her cousins is like anti-vax, so he's probably going to do COVID like three times uh, by the time we have the Lambda variant out. And their defense is not very good. Mike Zimmer has like a 23-year-old supermodel girlfriend that he's going to spend all his time with. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm leaning to a seven or eight win team. Okay, interesting. I I'm gonna be on the island here. Um, and it's not that I am very high on the Vikings this year. I'm just very low on the Bears and Lions this year. That's kind of where the wind's got to go somewhere for me. Um, this team they've just they feel set up for a deep playoff run. With Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. Defense looks pretty okay. Like, uh, they got Patrick Peterson and Brashad Breeland at cornerback. They're very, I think they're pretty good cornerbacks. Eight and a half. I feel like this is a nine or ten win team. But again, Kirk Cousins scares me. Uh, he, I don't know if you guys have seen the video. He almost missed a three-yard toss at his like gender reveal party where he had to throw the thing at the target and almost missed the target. It was two feet away from him. Uh, two, he... Says he's prefer living in a bubble because he's anti-vax over getting the, the vaccine. So who knows how long he'll miss. Um, fortunately for Kirk Cousins, he's in no danger of losing his job because the backup to him is Kellen Mond. Insert questionable emoji here. I have no idea. I'm literally just taking 10 wins here for them because Dalvin Cook gets them there and stays injury free. And the rest of the division is not very good. It's my thoughts here. Kellen Mond is not that bad. He was pretty decent in college. Uh, so was Tim Tebow. Yeah, right. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, but I, it's, it's not, I, again, I got to get my shots at Tim Tebow where I can because I hate him. But still, <laughs> and, but I just don't, eight and a half is perfect. And I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole, 10 or seven, either way. It seems right. Four or 12 also seems in the realm of possibility for this team. We just don't know. Did Mike Zimmer learn how to actually effectively coach in the fourth quarter? Like Steve said, we'll see. This, no, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Not a chance. Yeah. But moving on to a coach that I don't have very high faith in here. Matt Nagy led Chicago Bears. Uh, seven and a half is the win projection. They were right there last year with eight. They started five and oh. Uh, they were our joke. They were running joke for us in all of our videos again last year, guys, because they started off so well and lost just game after game after game. Cause of Steve, though, seven and a half. Where are you going? Uh, I just don't think I, I, I'd certainly know that Andy Dalton doesn't have it. And I don't know if Justin Fields does. I mean, when is the last 
Ohio State quarterback that came out and did anything. So uh, I don't have high hopes into those guys or this team. Um, their defense is always good. You know, they're always there, but defense can only get you so far when your offense has nothing. Uh, I think it's an under. Taking the under. Dr. Wes, are you a Justin Fields believer being an Ohio State fan? Steve is always trying to fight me. Uh, maybe <laughs> I, instead of I, those saying are facts, Wes. When's the last time an Ohio State quarterback came in the league and did anything? Well, let's call him a Georgia quarterback then, because he started at Georgia. So, uh, Justin Fields, he's going to be good. And the question is, how long are they going to hold out with Dalton, and then before they switch to Fields? Because Fields is going to be so much more dynamic. Uh, he's athletic. He can run. He's an accurate passer. I think he's going to be great in the NFL. I've been wrong before, but I think that uh, I'm hoping that they let Dalton get destroyed by by uh, the Rams in week one, and then they let Fields take over, and I think they're going to win at least eight or nine games, so I'm going to take the over because they have a good defense, and Justin Fields at the bare minimum could be an above-average game manager, so give me the – the Bears, think, even even if that does happen, I think that they hold off on Andy Dalton for way too long. I think it's five or six games before they go. Okay, yeah, still yeah. Fields in there, and by then they're going to have lost too many. The major back, the major problem they have is that Mac Nagy is their coach. Uh, if you put Sean McVay on this team, I mean, they would be a ten win team. I bet. So, guys, you're forgetting about a third variable here as well. Is that Nick Foles is still on this roster, like? We assume that they're going to jump right from Andy Dalton to Justin Fields. What what if Nick Foles gets three or four games in there? So my biggest question, you guys just kind of in your discussion there answered it. Who are the Bears? And I think the answer is we just don't know. Uh, I don't know who the Bears are. I know they have Allen Robinson, who top 10 wide receiver in the NFL, but who's throwing him the ball? Can that person throwing him the ball actually get him the ball? Um under for me as the breaker of ties, first of my name here on the channel between you guys. Uh, taking the under, but it's like a six or seven win under because I think by the time they do finally get to Justin Fields, it's too late. Uh, I'm not a Nick Foles guy. He beat my Patriots in the Super Bowl. So curses thee forever. I hate you. Um, not a Nick Foles guy. Not really an Andy Dalton guy. I've obviously, he played for the Bengals. Still not there. He's not the answer. Too little too late for the Bears once we get to that point. They might get to seven. They're going to flirt with this seven and a half all year, though, and that's what makes me nervous. Not touching it with a 10-foot pole either. Perfect number. How, how many wins do they get, guys? Let's go. Give me, give me a number. One number. Nine. Six. Nine, six, and I've got seven or eight. There we go. Yep, yeah, we just don't know, guys. You can't trust this is a perfect number for them. Don't touch it. Plus 550 for the division, though. They have to surpass Green Bay. I don't like that, unfortunately. Not at all. So, yep. We'll move on here to the bottom feeders here in this division. The poor, poor, poor Detroit Lions. My goodness, guys. I feel for this team. Uh, Speaking of teams that are in flux, though, we're talking about the Bears before. The Lions finally got rid of Matt Patricia last year. We called it in last year's NFC video. We knew Matt Patricia wasn't going to last very long, but it is now Dan Campbell's turn. Uh, insert another question mark emoji here. Uh, he was a tight end coach for the Saints for the past five years. Made the immediate jump here to head coach here for the Lions. Uh, Cousin Steve, man, where are we going here with the Lions? You know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know much about Dan Campbell, but I, he sounds like a guy who is going to win this team back. Who is going that, and it's amazing. You'd be amazed about what coaches who guys like who can they can do well with can pull out of these guys um i think four and a half is low i think this is about again about a six wing six win team um i think you know i think green bay is up there by themselves and then everyone else is about even below them um but i think four and a half is a little low i think with jared goff i think he's um you know who he is who you think he is but i think he's a little better than a lot of people give him credit for so I think they're they're going to be more than a four and a half win team. I think they're going to be about a six win team. Okay, Steve, really quick here then. So obviously Aaron Rodgers, cream of the crop quarterback, cream of the crop quarterback here in this division. We've got, uh, oh my gosh, I, I lost his name already. Kirk Cousins, Jeez, Pete. Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Where do you rank Jared Goff then in terms of quarterback scale just in this division? 
I think he's second. I think he's better than Cousins. I think he's better than anyone that the Bears are going to put out. I think he's a very, very large step down from Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers he, is top tier, right? But I think Jared Goff is number two in this division. He's like number six in this division, in my opinion. Ooh, Dr. Well, your opinion sucks. Oh, boy. Shots fired. There's uh, there's backups on the, on the Bears that are better than uh, <laughs> freaking Jared Goff. I mean... You might the only person that you would remotely put up there would be Nick Foles. That's only because Nick Foles won a Super Bowl, not lost a Super Bowl. At least Jared Goff has been to a Super Bowl. He went to that Patriots defense. Oh, there we go. West with the sigh emoji in the in the chat. <laughs> yeah. All Hopefully right. that shows up in the video. It does. It will. Don't <laughs> you worry. Yeah. Dr. West, man. It sounds like are you taking the under here? <laughs> yeah, way under. This is the Dr. West lock of the week. One point three, yeah, <laughs> uh, like easy. They're going to be flirting with uh, the Houston team. Oh, hearts! Uh, they're going to be he- flirting with Houston. They're going to be one or two. Those those two teams. Jared Goff is bad. Dan Campbell coaches like this is nineteen eighty seven. Uh, I mean, I don't see any positive notes on this team. There's no positives you can take from this team. They're going to be horrendously bad. They might win two games. Uh, if you guys are in a state that can make them that, I think you got a park day, the under on Houston and under on Detroit. All right. Dr. West's dog's going to get in here on the action. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you guys, again, breaker of ties here. I sided with Steve with the Bears. I'm going to side with Dr. West here on the under, and I think them in Houston fight for the number one overall pick this year. Um, <laughs> I think they this team actually went backwards after they won five last year. Uh, they lost Stafford for Jared Goff, downgrade. No more Kenny Galladay. No more Marvin Jones. A defense that just really needs some work. I'm not a DeAndre Swift believer by any means. Uh yeah, I think they flirt with two or three wins this year, honestly. Three and three and fourteen. I think for the Lions and uh, they push Houston for the number one overall pick. And I think this division is very straightforward based off what we can tell. I think we're all going Green Bay, if I'm reading everyone here correctly. Correct. Green Bay. Uh, Steve, he's got two unders for them below that. Yep, going Green Bay, Steve. Yeah. Green Bay, pretty straightforward here. Minus 160. Again, wrong pick. Not taking the Vikings. Ah, we no, took no, them no. last year, Steve. Fool me once, right? Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Green Bay at minus 160. This should be minus 250 or minus 300 for me, honestly, guys, for Green Bay to win this division. 160 is good. Take it if you can find it. Um, yeah, a- everything else is a dumpster fire, it feels like. You just don't know. Green Bay is the one constant here in this division. So let's push forward here. NFC South, we've got the Tom Brady division itself. Tampa Bay, who did not even win the division last year. The Saints did, but Tampa Bay coming here with a win projection of 12 and a division odds of minus 200. Cousin Steve here, can Tom Brady do it again in the division this year? You know, I think with they, you didn't know how Tom Brady was going to do last year, but obviously Tom Brady proved Tom Brady was Tom Brady. He doesn't need Bill Belichick. He doesn't need anything else. He will do it himself. He's the anomaly in the NFL. He's a... You know, he's a superhero in in football pads. He's just doing it time after time after time. I'll give him that respect. Um, And with, you know, Drew Brees gone, Matt Ryan really regressing, Sam Darnold is now on the Panthers. Like, what are you going to do with that? Um, They've got to be the favorite to win this division. Uh, Even at minus 200, I would probably still pick them. Uh, For 12 wins, though, I think it's a push at 12. I think that's the... I think that's the right number. I think they're going to be right there, top of the division, always winning games and stuff like that, especially with um, Jameis Winston now on the Saints. I think when we'll get in, I think he'll be fine. But um, I think 12 is, is the right number. Yeah, man. What I would do to have this at 11 and a half, honestly. My goodness. <laughs> right. Dr. Wes, thoughts on 12? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they won 11 games last year when winning the Super Bowl. Granted, you add a game, but to me, it's an under. There's just too many things that could go wrong. When you're betting for a season-long prop, you're assuming that everybody is healthy. You're assuming that they played like they did last year, and they win an extra game because there's an extra game on the schedule. 
And I just don't see it. I think 60% of the time they're going to hit the under. So to me, it's an under bet. Wow. So I, Steve, I'm not going to lie. I actually had push for this because 12, I love it. It's TB12. It's 12 wins. It's Tom Brady. It's the Bucks. It's Tampa Bay. It's TB all over the place. Take it, bro. Don't, don't second guess yourself. No. So you know what? This division, I'm going to go ahead and take the over. They get to 13-4 and four because this division has gotten weaker with the Saints. No more Drew Brees there. No Michael Thomas. We'll get to the Saints here in a second. Falcons, brand new head coach. Uh, we'll see how they do, I suppose. No more Julio Jones there for the Falcons. Everyone is leaving this division. Teddy Bridgewater got out of this division. Uh, Panthers, they're okay. Again, I think... I wouldn't bet the over, but I'm taking the over because of TB12. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't bet though, guys. But we're all we're all over the place here. Ideally, I I would hope for an 11 and a half and take that all day long and take the over on 11 and a half. Wouldn't bet the over on 12 though. It's a push for me, but for posterity's sake and for our video, I'll take the over. To make let's make it a little interesting here. We'll get a little bit different here. Let's move forward here to the division winner from last year, but now the Drew Brees list and Michael Thomas list, New Orleans Saints. Uh the win projection of nine, Dr. West, with a plus three fifty division odds here. Where are you going? I'm gonna take the over. Uh they won twelve games with Drew Brees, who couldn't throw the ball over ten yards. I mean, literally, if you watched him last year, he had the most New alarm I've ever seen in NFL. Uh, Jameis Winston can sling it, but he also uh, can throw a lot of picks. I'm hoping that Sean Payton can coach him up. He inherently is going to have a lot of interceptions, but I'm hoping that Sean Payton can can get onto a point where he can dump it off more to Kamara and let him do the work. And they don't have they have a above average defense, and so to me, uh, I think they're a, a ten to or eleven win team. Okay, cousin Steve, you agreed here with Doctor West and taking the over of nine. It hurts my soul, but I do. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think Sean Payton will limit Winston's mistakes. I think he'll it'll be more of a quarterback by committee. I think he'll use Taysom Hill more and more this year versus just you know straight up Jameis. Um, playing just majority of the snaps and everything. Um, Michael Thomas will be back after the first couple of games. So he's not out for the year. He's out for just a little bit. So he will be back. Um, that's good enough for a game or two. So I think a nine and a 350 odds, that is the bet that I would take. If the, you know, the, if, the, if the Buccaneers slip at all, you know, Tom Brady finally starts showing his age a little bit, you know, kind of where he we think he would all be by this point. And Winston just keeps under control. I think at 350, I, I would take those odds. Okay. <coughs> I'm going on a limb here. Uh, this team, when I look at teams, I, I check their band-aids, right? I look for band-aids on teams. Uh, no Drew Brees. That's, that, that's a big band-aid they got to cover. No Michael Thomas for six weeks. That's a big band-aid they got to cover. No Jared Cook anymore to be a really solid out valve now for James Winston, who likes to throw to the tight end. Ouch. That's another Band-Aid. Defensively, though, this team does still look really good. They do still have Marshawn Lattimore and Malcolm Jenkins, of course. Uh, can't forget about Cam Jordan at defensive end. But I have questions with this team. And when I have questions, I will naturally just side with the under. And this is my reach here. I think the Saints are better this year than I, than I even think they are. You guys took the over, and I'm, I, think that's, I think that's awesome. But I'm going on a limb here. My limb is the under for the Saints. In a very underachieving year... Because if uh, Jameis Winston can't stay on the field, it can't stop throwing interceptions. That puts the defense on the field for longer. That defense isn't as good when it's on the field for 35 or 40 minutes out of the game. Uh, it's my reach. Taking the under. I think they win seven or eight games this year. And uh, that's my big weird pick of the week. And I'll go ahead and lead you guys into my very surprise pick here. And I'm going to take the over on the Falcons. I think Matt Ryan has a lot to prove this year. There's chatter that he's not as good as he used to be. Uh, there's no more Julio Jones, no more Todd Gurley, but Dan Quinn is gone. Uh, this team was, they were a dumpster fire with Dan Quinn, unfortunately. Um, I, I like Arthur Smith taking over. He really helped Tannehill in Tennessee get to where he wanted to go. Uh, he's going to have be a really good resurgence, I think, for 
uh, for Matt Ryan this year. I'm taking the over, and I think the Falcons actually flirt with a wild card spot, Dr. Wes. I would disagree. I'm going with the under. Um, I've been on the Falcons a lot over the last few years, and the problem is their defense is just so bad. Matt Ryan's getting older, and I just don't see – what is he going to do? Mike Davis is going to, like, carry them to a playoff berth? I don't see it. So, to me, they're a six- or seven-win team, and so I'm going to lead in the, the under. All right, Steve, breaker of tie this time. Where are we going? Yeah, this is a, it's a bold place for me to be. Um, but to keep it simple, I think seven and a half wins for either of these next two teams is way too high. Um, so I think the Falcons are just under, you know, they're just showing time and time again. They just don't have, and it may change, um, now that the old head coach is gone and the new one is in, um, they just don't have that mental fortitude to win games and to come back from close games and to hold on to leads. So I just, I think it's an under. Taking the under. All right, Steve, we'll stay with you here then because you brought up the Panthers before. Seven and a half wins, same division odds then. They won five last year. Can they improve upon that five to get to seven and a half? I mean, what did but what did the Panthers do to to win three more games? Uh, they got rid of Teddy Bridgewater, who are now is now on my Broncos, but I think for them they have the other team around them to for, for him to succeed. And got Sam Darnold? Like what? Like, what? Okay. I mean, sure. You can give it a try. I just don't think it's going to work. And everywhere else, they you know, they just didn't get better. Their, their two receivers are really good, DJ Moore um, and uh, Anderson. But it's just like, what else do you have? I don't uh, – Christian McCaffrey's there. Um, hopefully he can stay healthy. He's a great guy to watch. But I just don't – I just don't think they have it. And I, uh, for them to be a three – better win team than last year I, there's no way i think it's the under not a chance okay dr west you agree in here with cousin steve steve almost convinced me but i came into this thinking the over so i'm going to stick to that i mean keeping christian mccaffrey healthy is going to be the determinant of this he was not healthy last year as was asked by all of my fantasy football teams if he can stay healthy, they're going to get the over. If he's not healthy, they're going to get the under. Sam Darnold is going to be interesting when he gets away from Adam Gase. I'm uh, hoping that, that rule can get him to a place that he's that he's showing the upside that people thought that he would have. Uh, I think they're a mediocre team, and I think they're an eight or nine win team. Eight or nine? Okay, Steve, how many wins do you think they get this year? I I don't see a, a many. I you know about what they did last year, five or six. It's even that high. Like, you know, they might be a three or four win team for me. I just I don't see it it happening. Which sucks for McCaffrey because he's you know kind of. But the same thing for Barkley. They're both sitting on terrible teams that you know they're not getting any help at all. They're wasting their best years of their career. Agreed. Yeah. So we got five for Steve and eight or nine for Doctor Wes. Breaker of ties. I love that I get to do this. Guys, we are all over the place with this division this year, it looks like. Uh, I'm going to take the under here. So, the number, you're thinking they got to get to eight. And for me, with Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold getting to eight wins, who, like, honestly, guys, quite possibly no fault of his own with Adam Gase as a head coach, has 13 wins in three years. Um, you're asking him now to get to eight. With a brand new offense, learning a brand new head coach is, you know, playbook with Matt rule um, a defense that I have questions just regarding overall eight just seems too high. I don't think they're in no, in the contention for the number one overall pick. I think they'll reside around like six, seven or eight somewhere in there, but five or six wins here for the Panthers uh, leads me to a very obvious division winner. I'm going with the TB 12 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course, Dr. West, where are you going? I too will take Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. That's Steve. We don't. We're not picking Steve. Steve, are you taking Tampa Bay, or should I change your box here? No, you can leave it. I'm taking okay. Tampa Bay as well. I think. Uh, I think New Orleans Saints are big, more wins than nine, but not enough to to sit down TB12. Do you think they get to ten or eleven wins? Looks like Steve for the Saints. Yeah, I think Agreed. they're agreed. 
Yep. Agreed. 10 or 11. I like that. I had to go on one limb here, guys. I had to. I, the Saints under and the, and the Falcons over for me. It's going to be wrong, as I usually am, of course. But uh. nonetheless, we push forward then to our last division and arguably the most fun one here, guys. This is going to be some fireworks this year. Look at those win projections. Vegas is confused. I'm confused. I don't quite know where to go here. The Seahawks, who won the division last year, are the third favorite this year in this division. Uh, the flavor of the week for Vegas is still the 49ers, led by Jimmy G. Uh, separated by, you know, 1.8 to 1, 1.9 to 1, if you will, for the division odd here. Let's kick things off here with the 49ers here, Dr. West. Ten and a half wins. Where are you going? Yeah, you said it. I mean, all four of these teams are so good. And if you would have put them in other divisions, they'd be the favorite. If you took Seattle and put them in the NFC East, they would be minus 180 to win the division. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. To me, the the Cardinals plus 650 seems like good value, but I don't know if they're going to win. For the San Francisco 49ers, they were plagued with injuries last year. If they can get it together, I think they're going to be a, a wonderful team. Ten and a half wins, though, so they have to get to 11. 11 is six. That's asking a lot. I'm going to hedge the under, uh, but it's not confidently. I think that there are a lot of things that could go wrong with this team. They are they have been bitten by the injury bug and uh, – you know, I, I don't know. I don't feel great about it, but I'm going to hedge under. This division's fun. It's fun this year. Cousin Steve, you agree with Dr. West on the under for the 49ers? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I think it is the under, but I just, but it, it doesn't speak to my thought process. I think that the 49ers will be bad. I think they're about a 10 win team. Um, but I just think it's pretty. <laughs> division i think everybody's going to be like two and two in this division so then you got to find your win somewhere else um and i you know you see a spattering of it um but you know someone someone's got to falter um i think la got way better seattle i i do think they're on the downward trend um arizona's up though so someone's kind of got to be in the middle or even go down so i i think it's an under for san francisco yeah, Steve, man, perfect. Yep, I think San Francisco, they've already got <laughs> questions at quarterback. People want to see Trey Lance. Uh, Kyle Shanahan is like, no, Jimmy G's my guy. You got a three-head monster at running back. That's going to create some issues, I think, down the road with some team cohesion, if you will, because nobody knows who's going to play when. Wide receiver core looks good, but someone's got to go down at some point. I'm there with you guys. Perfect, yeah. I think it's under 10 and a half, but it's not a knock on them. I think it's 8 or 9, maybe even 10. But getting to getting to eleven for this team in this division is hard because you got to have one team that's going to get there, and for me, it's not the 49ers. But cousin Steve, for you, is it the Rams who has the same win projection as the Niners? Uh, I think if this was like a, a nine and a half, I'd be all over it, right? But at ten and a half, it's tough. But I think they are the team that is up. And I think there are going to be an over this year. I think, again, it'll be close, but I, you know, there might be an 11 or maybe a 12 win team, especially with that extra game. Uh, but I think they're the team that's the up. I think Matthew Stafford brings a whole new level at quarterback there. The guy's super tough, super smart. And I think it's a good team. Yeah. Dr. West first really quick, Steve, man, we are, we are sprickety the same lingity here with these teams, the NFC West thus far. I think they found their missing piece here and what they need on offense. Jaron Goff was not the answer, and I, I think they've got it here in Matt Stafford. Offense looks great. Defense looks very strong. Ten and a half, give me the over. I think Sean McVay is prepped for a Super Bowl run here. Team, if they can avoid the injury bugs, looks stacked. I love it to go ten and a half. Got them winning 12 games this year as a spoiler alert here for the Rams. Dr. West, you going to make it three for three? I will not. I like to antagonize you guys. I'm going to go the under. I think that, uh, I don't know. They just don't have enough depth. They've spent all their cap money to get the high end players, but they don't have any depth. If there are any sort of injuries on this team, they're going to be derailed. And, uh, to me, I mean, Cam Akers is out. Daryl Henderson, Sonny Michelle, meh. Uh, I've never been a Matt Stafford guy. So to me, 
I'm thinking they're a uh, eight or nine win team. Steve, I know you were a Matt Stafford guy last year. Does that kind of sting hearing Dr. West say that? You know, it's it's okay. Wes has been wrong before, and he'll be wrong again. <laughs> I sure hope so on this one. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. Wow, we, got, we got some shots fired here in this one. Dr. Wow. Wes, we'll keep things here with you then. If you've got two wow. unders, you can't possibly have three in a row with the Seahawks at 10 wins, Wow. Right? <laughs> hey, I'm going over, baby. I was on the Seahawks last year. I'm on the Seahawks this year. We're going to let Russ cook. Uh, I think they've only gotten better, and DK Metcalf is going to be arguably the best wide receiver in football. Uh, so that's where we're at. Uh, and and he, the mic goes off. All right, cousin Steve, over or under? Push ten wins for the Seahawks. Oh, uh, you know, I really want to try that. I really want to hit that push because I think that's kind of right where they're at. You can't bet against Russell Wilson, um, but but again, same thing with the San Francisco. Some somebody's got to go down with someone coming up. And I think the Cardinals are coming up, so I think the Seahawks have to go down. Now, it might be nine wins, um, and nine, but not might not be very much. They might be in a wild card, and they might end up going to the Super Bowl. Who knows? Can't Like I said, can't count Russell Wilson, but he uh, doesn't have an offensive line, really. Um, and just, the yeah, he is, he, DK Metcalf is great. Uh, the guy is really, really good, and he's a monster, but uh, I, I just think that he seems not super happy there as once as he once was. So obviously if you know, your star quarterback thinks your team isn't operating right, then your team maybe isn't operating right. So, uh, if somebody has got to go up, somebody has got to go down. So I think they go down. Steve, are we on the same wavelength here, man? What is going on here? I, we did it last year too. We were on the under on the Seahawks and they end up going way over and we left Dr. West just cook all over us here with the Seahawks. But Again, you said it perfectly. There's some teams down and some teams up, and my down team is the Seahawks because, guys, oh, here we go. I love me some Cardinals this year. They were my team last year. If you remember, I picked them every single week last year. <laughs> every single week. And if you think I'm hopping off that bandwagon, I wouldn't call it a bandwagon. I started it last year. I am not. I am taking the over for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Kyler Murray is going to put together an even better year than last year. His rookie year, he had 24 total touchdowns. Year two, what a jump, 37 total touchdowns. The guy's a rushing machine. He's got weapons out the wazoo. DeAndre Hopkins, yes, AJ Green is old and injured, but that's okay. He's This team is primed because San Fran and Seattle are going to falter, and they are going to push LA for this division title this year, plus 650. Oh, give it to me all day long. Give me the over here on eight and a half easily for Arizona. They get to double digits all day long. And Dr. West, hold your horses because we're going right here to cousin Steve, who I know is going to agree with me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Murray continues to be get better and do better. Um, and I've said it before. I've said it to wife. I've said it three times. So I'm not going to go up. So I'm not going to go down. These guys are up. So I think they're there. I think they've had a lot of trials and tribulations last year where they lost a lot of close games, won some close games. Um, and I think they, they're kind of on the other side of that this year. I think they're finally going to win more of those close games than they're going to lose. Um, so I think it's a, it's a 10 or 11 win team. Dr. Wes, spoil this party. Yeah, I'm going to spoil it. I'm a, I'm on the under. <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm not a Cliff Kingsbury guy. He, he acted like he when he came out, he was going to be this air raid offense, and he, then he's just like a giant wiener when it comes to play calling. Uh, Kyler Murray is above average but undersized. DeAndre Hopkins is anti-vax, and he's probably going to get COVID three times. And Mick Kirk Cousins can just, like, uh, hang out together in an Airbnb somewhere. Uh, who is their running back? I don't know. They're not good. Uh, yeah, so to me, it's the under, and I feel pretty good about that. Well, Cousin Steve, uh, this, I hate to regret you in front of me. This is the last time Dr. West is joining us on a video this year. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, when I get 80% of the picks right, you're going to have to bring me back. All right. So, Dr. West, we're going to lock in our first official bet of the year here. 20 bucks, or we'll do 25 bucks. I'm taking the over eight and a half with you. Even money. Well, let's do uh, Seahawks versus Cardinals. You're under and over and I'm over and under. No, I don't I don't want to bring that in here. I want to just we're talking about the Cardinals mm, no, here. Oh, no, no, talking no, about the Cardinals. No, 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 I don't like that bet. Okay. 
No bet then. We'll talk. We'll talk elsewhere. Cousin Steve, I think Doctor West is a big wuss here. Oh <laughs> shit! Let's do Seahawks versus Cardinals, and I'll give you uh, two to one on your money. Deal. Twenty bucks. Deal. Lock it in here first, YouTube. Let's go. All right. Seahawks right versus down. Cardinals. Sorry, Steve. So write it. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Water. Water bet, as they say. Uh, cool. off the fan, or I can't remember who that is. The, the, the best <coughs> footballers. So, Doctor West here. We'll kick things off here with you then for the division winner. I see a lot of red in your column yeah. over there, except for one team. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of parity in this division. I'm either on the 49ers other or the Seahawks. I'm going to take the Seahawks, but I would not be shocked if the 49ers won the division. Cousin Steve, where are you going? Uh, I'd be very shocked if the 49ers won the division. Um, but I think uh, I think the Cardinals are up, and I don't think they're that up. I think the Rams are too good with everything that they have. I think the Rams win. Perfect, Steve. Yep. I think the Cardinals push the Rams, but I think the better play here is the Rams. I do think the Rams get there just with better overall defense. Uh, they got the pieces, though. Both teams are going to push. Pete Carroll is in his 90s now, I think. Russell Westbrook's in his 50, or Russell Westbrook, Russell Wilson's in his 50s. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the team's getting old. I have no faith in the 49ers this year. I think there's already too many questions, but I'm with you there, Cousin Steve. We're going to take the Rams, but I I think I'm going to actually place a bet on the Cardinals to win this division. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's a smart bet at 650, especially with the win total so close. Like I said, if you had to straight up, I would take the Rams. But on that bet, I would take the Cardinals. I totally agree. I, I'm hating on the Cardinals, but that is plus 650 with this division, I think is not a bad bet. Yeah, with the parody you just mentioned, Dr. West, yeah, why not try to get 7-1 to one or so on your money? If you can. For, for, a, for a team that, again, lost a lot of close games last year, Won a lot of close games as well. Maybe the, maybe the coin flips work out for them this year. We can only hope. But uh, that will take us to our summary here, guys. Let me know. Like, what, We were kind of in agreement here a, a lot of the way, I guess. Steve and I, I'm not quite sure what we're doing here, but we were on the same wavelength for all of our picks. Uh, so, Cousin Steve here, give me your NFC Super Bowl pick then. So, uh, this one... You know, they're, I think the obvious pick is the Packers and the Buccaneers, but I really, really like the Rams. I think the Rams are going to be really good. Like I said, like you said before, Matt Stafford, I think is that missing piece there. Uh, I think they're going to get there. So I think we're going to see a Rams Bills Super Bowl. Who comes out on top then, Cousin Steve? Ah, oh, man. Uh, you got to give it to the Bills. You got to give it to the Bills. Those guys finally need to win a Super Bowl. Josh Allen, great quarterback. I think I think they win it. Okay, Doctor Wes, give me your Super Bowl pick out of the NFC. What? <laughs> <laughs> Gold Chase Young. I don't think that's an option. Um, Doctor Wes, shocking the world here, <clears throat> taking the Washington Buckeyes to make the Super Bowl out of the NFC. We got the Teton. Versus the Washington Buckeyes. Who you got? Lay Teton. Lay Teton rolls forward. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Well, I'm going to be a little bit different here. I think the monkey comes off the back of Aaron Rodgers and he gets there this year in a what is arguably a weak NFC, a very weak, I dare say, NFC. Um, not many teams to challenge. The NFC East is not great. The NFC South, everyone left. It seems like the NFC West is going to beat each other. Is going to beat everybody up. I'm going to take the the Packers here, and I also have Le Teton. I have them versus the Packers. Doctor West, give me Le Teton to bring the Super Bowl back to. They're in Nashville, right? I believe so. They are. Yeah. Wow! I cannot believe after all this, we both took the Titans to win the. I'm I'm taking the Titans. <laughs> I think I like the plays this year. If Tannehill can go thirty-two touchdowns and seven interceptions, let Derrick Henry do the rest. I think they. I think they're going to get that monkey off their back this year as well after that AFC Championship run they had. So. Let's let's do it. Late Lol Ray Teton. Hey, I want to throw something out there. Uh, if the peoples want to challenge me in the AFC versus the NFC, 
I will give you a a plethora of, of cards. If you can beat me in picks and the NFC or the NFC, leave your cup. Leave your comments below. Yep, guys, leave those picks down below in the comments. Dr. West, throwing the gauntlet down for your picks. We'll get those locked in. We'll check them throughout the years. It's a full year thing, Dr. West, for the giveaway, just to specify. Yeah, absolutely. If they can beat me, you tell me if you want the Pokemans or the uh, what what your favorite team is. You know, we'll, we'll get you we'll get you some good stuff. Oh, good boy, Bolton there making an appearance. Oh yeah, yeah, Dr. yeah. Oh. Is, yeah, roof, roof. yeah. He's uh, a nice boy. Good boy, Bolton. Yeah, it's very nice, guys. We got a giveaway here from Dr. West. So, guys, make sure you guys smash that like button. You guys should do it too, Dr. West and Cousin Steve. Get those thumbs up and leave that. Leave a like on this video, guys. We'll be dropping picks every single week coming at you throughout this NFL season. We love the NFL, guys. We love talking about it. We want to share that with you guys. So, guys, leave those picks. Who is your surprise team out of the NFC, though? If you had to pick one. Uh, the Washington Washingtons. I mean, this seems so obvious. Yeah, we, your your NFC Super Bowl pick is your surprise pick, cousin Steve. Then, uh, man, that's a tough one. But I think, even though they're the division winners, I think Dallas could surprise some people. I don't think it's going to happen. I think the NFC is going to be pretty cut and dry. But um, I there's another team I was going to pick, but I don't ruin your thunder, Anthony. So <laughs> you do right where I was going, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> Roll Cardinals roll, baby. Let's go. Get to the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I like them. If they can get this home field advantage, not necessarily the number one seed, but they can get a home game and keep this home field advantage. Come on, Cardinals. Don't do it to me like you did. I was, I was ripping my hair out last year in all of our weeks because I was like, I want to pick the Cardinals, but I know they're going to lose, but I still pick the Cardinals because I'm an idiot. But Cardinals, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> But guys, that will do it for our NFC picks. If you haven't yet, go watch our AFC picks. That video has already dropped. Go watch that one, guys. Leave your picks in that video, too. Go challenge Dr. West for the full year picks, as well as our weekly picks. We'll have weekly giveaways as well, guys, for all of our picks. We hope to see you guys in the next video.